Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Sarah the Northwood Stitcher here, popping on to make a video and show you guys some things that I've completed and things that I'm gonna start. And if you guys remember, I did this cute little pillow. This was um, something I showed last video by Helen D. I did finish the larger pillow. Took a lot of stuffing. I did hand stitch this. The uh, little chart that she gave us with the charms and the pin and the lace, there was enough lace for me to actually use it on the big pillow too. So I was thrilled, very excited about that. I do have a little pin to put here, but I'm not sure what I'm going to put there. If anything, it's a larger pillow. I would say it's a five by seven. And I don't know if I want a pin dangling for kitty paws. I think that might be a problem. So I might put that aside. I'm really pleased with those. Those are really cute. Hopefully you guys have checked out her website. Um, also in my discoveries up here while I'm cleaning, I'm actually cleaning out the craft room out of urgency because I'm gonna have somebody over and they're allergic to cats. So they're gonna sleep on an air mattress up here. God bless them. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they'll just get creative sitting in here. But when I was cleaning up, I did find a pillowcase with my father's last uh, project that he was doing. So this was his whip. This He was a postage stamp collector, and he loved finding the kits of postage stamps. So my blueberry theme continues. I'm definitely going to finish this. This is done on a 14-count Ada, and it's only a 6 six and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And you can see, whoops, he made a lot of progress. <clears throat> so it, it's one of many projects that of his that I have to finish. And I'm excited to do it because we both love blueberries. There's a little Chewbacca needle minder. He's an avid sci-fi fan. And I actually had Chewbacca as his ringtone. So it was pretty perfect to give him that. I'm glad he was using it. So this will be a fun thing to finish off. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this when it's done. What he would do, because he collected postage stamps and cross-stitch graphs, he would actually fit it to the front of a three-ring binder in the pocket. That's how he decorated his three-ring binders. That seems to me to be a lot of work for a three-ring binder. But it, it was stunning when it was finished. So that'll be nice. I did finish a waxing moon design. And this is called my stitching time. This was quick. It was fun. And I really like the saying. My stitching time is sometimes for your safety. Remember that. <laughs> I thought that was funny. I did this on a, I left all the information downstairs. Oh, what was it? I think it's a 28 count Zweigart. I have to go look. Um, but I used the uh, called for DMC. There was a lot of over dyed, but they did the conversion. So this week's dye works and the DMC alternatives. I did all DMC and I loved how it came out. I hid my year, my initials and my year in the, these little corners. Very hard to see, which is how I like it. You know, unless you're right, right up in there, you can go and then find out what year I did it. But yeah, you can see SK23. Oh, and I see a little fuzzy on there. So now I have to frame this and Miss Mary Mac. That'll be fun. And I don't know if you guys remember my giveaway, but um, we did the roulette and it was Pam Bowers who won that giveaway. She won a chart. She sent me the sweetest thing. Her um, husband, I guess, has a 3D printing machine. And he makes these. I have shot off an email to her to find out if there's an Etsy shop, but it's really sturdy. It's a, a good thickness. It's not too heavy. It's the perfect weight. Um, the holes are beautiful and smooth. I love this. And she also sent a little needle minder. 
There's a thank you card, but there's no Etsy shop info. So I'm really curious to find out if there is a shop that I can go browse. So hopefully, Pam, if you see this video, go look at your email and give me some info. I'm excited about that. This was made on a 3D printer as well. I love the Celtic knot in that heart. That's really cool. So thank you so much again for that. That was awfully kind. And let's see what else was in this pile. Ah, I had, I couldn't wait. I unpacked it without you, I'm sorry. I had an order come in from cross-stitching, crossstitchingsupplies.com. I've mentioned in a previous uh, video that she's going to be closing her online shop. So there were some great buys. I've been going there and buying fabric, fabric, fabric. I really found some great stuff this time. This is a 13 by 18, 32 count sparkled gray with metallic silver print. I love snowflakes or stars. I think that's going to be fun to stitch with. I shouldn't put that. I'll put it over here. Then a 40 count. This is only an 8 by 13, but it's perfect for little projects. Summer khaki linen. I don't think any of these cost more than 5 or $6. A navy Lugana 28 count. Love that dark blue. I just saw a pattern that I need this color for, and now I can't remember where I saw the pattern. Oh, isn't that always the case of trying to match things up? 28 count ivory joblin, 13 by 18. I love that. And then just a beige Ada, a 14 count, which is what I want to do. My new book arrived. Now that got, I get these because I have a subscription to Just Cross Stitch magazine. And this came in yesterday. It's loaded, but on the inside, there's a pamphlet of uh, tiny little ornament stitches. So 14 count Ada or the smaller count linen. I think they'll be really cute. This little brochure alone has six, nine, 12, 12 patterns. Um, and then of course, the deep dive in here. I've, I've got to mark this one up with all my post-it notes. If you try to look for this now, it's going to be really expensive. I'll probably pull it up in a few more years um, and show you guys again. Then we can all buy it for $4.99 probably on a website. So hang on. It's okay. <laughs> put that over there. Also, in other exciting news, I don't know if I told you guys, but the frames, the frames for the Abe Lincolns came in. So I was able to frame those. These are frames that I got on Amazon, eight by 12. When I order on Amazon, I make sure that they give me the back side of the frame so I can see what I will be wrestling with. And then I make sure that the frame thickness is wide enough so I can actually just cut the fabric to fit. There's no lacing involved. There's no pinning involved. But there's an, enough fabric on the edges of my stitch. 10 years from now, you can take it out and you still have enough um, space for a pillow to stitch it to a pillow or quilt it into a block, do something like that. But I'm really pleased with how these came out. Let me see if I can do this. Let's see, tip it, tip it, tip it. Somebody told me which way to tip it. Ah, there we go. I'm so excited. I'm tempted. To stitch a third, particularly since the the um, frames were so inexpensive, but we'll see. I'll, I'll put it away for now. But the boxes, even that they came in, are perfect for storing the um, frames in them, and then I can wrap the boxes up when I gift it. 
really excited about that. But now I'm on the hunt somewhere in here for a nine by nine or a 10 by 10 for Miss Mary Mack. And then I also have to frame my stitching time that I just showed you. So that's going to be an ordeal. I have to pull stuff out in order to pack the walls to make space up here for my guest. And I will get to that too. Ultimately, there's just a lot to do and I'm a little overwhelmed, so I'm doing it in stages. So I, I recently committed to a new pattern for this cute little basket thing that I like to make. And I wanted some sort of shipping or nautical motif to go on top. I found something really interesting in my collection. Stacy Nash Primitives. I want to do that anchor. And they called the projects on the back here pin disc, needle book. I don't see a needle book. Scissor fob. And I don't know what's what. Oh, this may be the needle book. That's the scissor fob. That's a pin disc. I'm going to do the pin disc. So in order to see if it's going to fit and what I should stitch it on and what the size is, I don't know if you guys remember, but I use this really cool app. I have an iPhone. It's really helpful. It's called X-Stitch Calculator or Cross-Stitch Calculator. That's what the app picture looks like. I just blew it up so you guys could see it. It's a moon with a needle through it. But it's such a great app because I can plug in what the actual stitch count is going to be. So the pattern count. So this one is actually a 50 by 60. What my uh, thread count is going to be on my fabric. So this is going to be 16 count Ada. Maybe. I've got to match it up. But if I do a 16 count Ada, and I, I did not put in a border. If you put in the border, it'll tell you actually how big your fabric needs to be in order for you to frame it properly. I usually use a two inch border all the way around, but I did it with no border and it's gonna be a four by four. So then what I did, so it sits around, is I took a four uh, inch embroidery hoop, placed it on top to see if that's what I like. And I think that's a good size. So I don't necessarily know if I'll mount it on a hoop on this, I might just cut a disc shape and embellish it with some cording, ship cording. I could do that uh, around the corners or the edges, but that's the size I'll do. Now I have to commit to the color fabric, match up the threads, see what I like. I've got a, a white 16 count, but it's maybe too white. I think I want to dye it maybe a blue gray. So there's that. Oh, ideas, ideas. I want to make sure I have enough projects downstairs so I don't start going through withdrawals, not having access to my craft room. Also, <laughs> this is still a mystery. I think I, I put this up on two videos back. I want people to help me figure out what this is. The small ball. Somebody thought it was a Fisher-Price um, xylophone thing. I can't find it. This is a ribbed piece here. Um, and all of the Fisher Price ones, even the counterfeit Fisher Price ones, don't have these ridges here. So I don't know. Small ball has a hole all the way through. And this large end is hollow but it's also flat. I can't, for the life of me, figure out what this is. <sighs> Please take some guesses and help me out. There is a um, reward involved once we can figure out what this is. I'm still looking up every, every clue that you guys give me. Oh, I think it's this or I think it's that. Um, it'd be nice if I could confirm it right away, but I mean, I've been going on these crazy uh, rabbit hole Google searches trying to find it and that's not working. But it, it's been fun. I've been entertained. Oh, what am I going to do cleaning all this up? 
I do have plans still to do a um, bell pull demonstration, how I would finish off a bell pull, as well as the Mill Hill kits. So I am going to work on those. But I have to rig up something so I can figure out how to put my camera view above my workstation. And that's not going very well. So I'll, I'll figure out how to do that and do a close-up for you guys. I'm also going to include some pictures of my finished stitches. And underneath, hopefully, I'll, I'll have looked up all of the designers and names so I can show you guys those. to talk briefly about starting your own stitching group. Um, I know that you know you can feel isolated being a cross stitcher and not knowing other many other cross stitchers and maybe you should get to know some in your area. You can always join a Facebook group um, and find out who in your area is interested in, in public meetups every second Sunday or so at a place like Panera or um, a place of your choice. They usually don't frown on people meeting for a few hours in Panera and putting tables together. Um, I know I had a great group when I uh, was back on the Cape and we had seven or eight members and we could gather together and just exchange ideas and see other people's cross stitch, which was really great. I really enjoyed it. Or maybe you can add some crocheters or knitters to your group. They're welcome as well. You can see projects and maybe learn a new craft. Um, if you don't have Facebook, you can put out maybe something on Instagram and see who's in your area, crafty people or cross stitch. You can just draw people in that way and see who's willing to meet up in an area that uh, you guys can agree on. Sometimes it's uh, a struggle because people are driving quite a lot of distance. I mean, around here, some people drive up to an hour. So you can find out if there are different groups that already meet that you can join up with. Or like we did in our group is we changed our location. So only like once, a, once every two months, somebody had to drive an extra 25 minutes to get to that space. And then we would try to shorten it so it was a closer distance rather than a longer distance or some place where everybody could get something else done. They could do some stitching and then grab some groceries and go home or do another errand. So that's that's just a great idea to meet people that way and and just see other people's stuff. I know I really come, up, come to life when I get to see other people's cross stitch and the ideas that they have and the challenges that you can see if, you know, maybe if they're stitching on linen and you haven't tried linen before, you can see that it's not so difficult sitting next to somebody who's stitching on linen. Um, I learned how to stitch on linen because I kept bringing my cross stitch into a shop. This was back in the, I want to say, early 90s. And the ladies there kept saying, oh, you're such a nice stitcher. You have to try linen. You have, I was... <laughs> Like, no, I can't. And then they just pulled out a little scrap and put in two or three stitches in front of me, gave it to me and said, make a little box and bring it back. I mean, it was just a tiny little challenge, a little piece of homework, and I was able to do it. And once you start, you can see very clearly how to count over because on eight o'clock, it's nice blocks. On linen, it's a little harder to see the holes, depending on what you're stitching on. 
that's why I like Lugana because it almost looks like Ada. It just has that finished linen look. But there's a lot of uh, reasons for gathering with other people and it's really helpful. Or sign up for a retreat. Um, bring a friend. Even if they don't cross stitch, maybe they can do one of their crafts like knitting or crocheting. And you can see other things if you don't want to go alone. So those are just some ideas and um, I hope you try them or I hope you're part of a group. Um, I know I can visit different places and go to different groups in my area. I haven't for a while because of COVID and I'm a little concerned about that. But now that the weather's a little better and I can do more outside, I don't have a problem with maybe doing something outside with the group. I'm not so keen on indoor stuff still. And I know that we still have some active COVID cases in our area, so that bothers me. But live a little, explore, and um, just be brave and get out there if you haven't already. I uh, rescue a lot of cross stitches when I find them in Goodwill or at yard sales. It just breaks my heart that somebody put that much time into something and it's being forgotten. So I was asked to show this, and this is something that I bought at Goodwill. This is a Leisure Arts cross stitch. I paid $5 for it. $5. It does have information on the back as to who stitched it. Um, it's just sad that I found it in a Goodwill. It's such a beautiful cross stitch that I will find wall space for it because I, I really think it's beautifully done and I like how they framed it and just the frame alone was worth that <laughs> double matted couldn't pass it up but all I really know is that it's a leisure arts maybe it's a kit that used to go around I, I have seen finished ones on eBay um, but this one I really think I'm gonna keep even though I don't have any wall space I'll probably put it in my fall collection because it does you know, they're walking through something that looks like an autumn scene with those tree colors. But keep an eye out for it if you guys can give me the actual name of it. It might be called Heart and Hand. It might be called Man and Wife. But I'd like a little more information. I'll like to put it on the back before I hang it up. Also in the corner of my craft room was another save. This I've left the sticker on too. Um, country spoken here. Somebody did it in 2003 with initials LJF. This was $6.99. Again, fantastic framed finish. I can't believe that somebody would get rid of it. It was professionally done because of the backing. Backing's completely covered. But um, that's a really cute stitch. And I I'm partial to blues and purples and greens. I'm gonna tip it just right. There we go. That's a sweet one. And double matted for $6.99. A beautiful frame. How could I leave it there? Great. I'm not really, this is not really my genre. I wouldn't stitch something like this, but it's really lovely. I would probably maybe put it in a kitchen. I don't know. I haven't put it on a wall yet. But it's a sweet uh, sweet collage of different things. There's even a cross stitch in the cross stitch. I don't know if you guys saw that. But Home Sweet Home is their representation of a cross stitch. I think that's cute. So there is a, a market for used cross stitches. Um, eBay sells a lot of finished stitches. I know some people sell their cross stitch after they've made it, you know, little ornaments and things. I get the best, like if I can't go to a craft fair and I really want a nice kitchen towel with a crocheted top, that's the first place I go is eBay because there's just a wealth of, you know, dish cloths out there, or dish towels. And I like the ones that have the little button and hang over my um, stove handle. I can't stop buying them, but 
you know, you need a fresh one every now and then, and you need a seasonal one, and I can get it on eBay. And I use uh, PayPal, so it's, you know, third party, extra security kind of thing. I wouldn't give anybody my credit card online. But I thought I'd share those with you. And I do have some other rescues in the house. Maybe I can take some pictures of those. One's a really uh, primitive um, locomotive that I thought was really cool. But it's it's something that I bought because I immediately thought of my father. He would have loved to have done a, a locomotive cross stitch. He never got around to it. So <laughs> I had to get it and I hung it up in the stairwell here going down the stairs. It. It wasn't even in good shape. It had a stain on it, but I had to rescue it. It has a home now, and it has somebody who walks by it and smiles. That's all that matters. So anyway, I'm going to put some editing together, and hopefully somewhere in the middle here, I've got some of my finishes that came out okay without a glare. We'll see how I did. My daughter helped me do some photography this time, so aces to her. Until then, have a great day. Happy stitching and be safe.